out today that Mercury is in retrograde throughout June. What? Basically, it means there's a lot of bad cosmic juju around. So if you're not feeling the full ticket, that's probably why. So now you said you weren't Mercury. very well. Mercury is in retrograde. The planet Mercury is in retrograde. Oh, I thought you meant the stuff that comes in thermometers. <laughs> I can understand what you're... Tom, where are you in the world right now? I've just popped to Bishop Auckland while the weather's nice. And I thought, while I'm here, like... like, Beer, please! Thank you. Sorry, my hand does that when I come to Bishop Auckland. It it does that in Bishop Auckland sometimes. Whilst I'm getting a beer in, let's give you some wrestling news. Hell of an intro all round, that one. (laughs) Legendary. Vince McMahon apparently didn't understand released WWE stars. We'll say who they are in a moment. We have the latest on the WWE New Japan Pro Wrestling Talks. And when will NXT go back on the road? Find out soon. So the releases have been on the mind of quite a few people in the wrestling world today. In fact, the entire wrestling world still shocked by the sheer amount of, of let goes that we've seen from WWE. And we're finding out a little bit more about the rhyme and the reason behind some of them, namely Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy. And it is a little bit of the Wonga, uh, Adam, but there's other things, isn't there? Yeah, and this is nuts. So this is from The Observer, um, and Meltz has written, in the case of Alistair Black, there were issues with the writing staff, but in the end, he and Murphy were both wrestlers where Vince McMahon was said to not understand their style of wrestling. Incredible. There was no word if these cuts uh, will affect talks to bring his wife, uh, Thea, of course, uh, back, which was the idea last week. She's been spotted at the Performance Centre. They've been filming something. This is um, the, obviously the former Zelina Vega. Uh, going back there, what does that mean, Tom? <laughs> I'm just... Ba- I, to be honest with you, I think your guess is as good as mine here because we have not only Thea Trinidad back in the PC doing stuff, possibly coming back, but we had, as we all saw on TV, this great new character for Alistair Black that, that had videos and all this stuff, and it just seems they've just gone, no, I, just, I don't understand him, bye. It is the idea that Vincent Mann doesn't know how to book... Uh, outside of a certain wrestler like big guy good guy bad guy like the idea of someone like Alistair Black who is such a a rich potential has such rich potential that it almost hurts his head you know it, it it's somebody and the way that Alistair Black looks as well like like very like very tattooed very stern like a, a, a very stoic character I can imagine that confused the heck out of Vince McMahon so I kind of get it Maybe From Vince's perspective. when he's talking about the style of wrestling, I I, I I I might have figured it out here. These are two guys who use their legs a lot, right? Alistair Black, uh, he's got the big kick to end things. Buddy Murphy, he's always throwing knees about. Legs is the problem. He, he doesn't <laughs> understand issue legs. Is legs. I don't understand what that means, honestly. But nor does Vince McMahon. But there you go. Uh, moving swiftly on, Tom. Moving swiftly on. So, uh, WWE stars unhappy. There's a sentence that you might hear quite a bit of over weeks to come. But this time to do with nothing to do with the releases. So, this comes from The Observer, who say, uh, this past week, as we know, all Raw and SmackDown stars were told to attend additional training ahead of their return to the road. Uh, Mike Johnson reported that workouts could involve conditioning skills, uh, matches in the ring. Basically, when whenever you're not on TV, you're going to be in the PC doing some stuff. Uh, Responses from to the Observer suggest that several different stars who live outside of Orlando haven't been very happy with this because it interrupts their home life and their routine, uh, especially those with families. Because many can train on their own, do conditioning while at home. The idea of having to come into the office for a meeting that could have potentially been an email uh, is something that is incredibly frustrating for people who live outside of Orlando. If you live in Orlando, then you're laughing. Just just pop in, hang out with the lads, and head away yeah, again. Make up for all those bumps that you've missed as well. Knacker your body out a little bit more before you get back on the road. I can understand why people would be a, a, a little bit miffed by this um, because, I don't know, they have I don't want to say they've had it easy because it's not really been easy for anyone this whole time, but uh, they've been working a lot less. They've been enjoying more time with their family, which is obviously a, a tremendous thing. And so to have that taken away from them when maybe they expected to be able to continue to do that... Um, but the, the idea of like, yeah, Randy Orton getting an email and saying, Randy, mate, you want to just t- come in and brush up on the fundamentals, pal. Cause, well, th- this mm. is funnily, this is another bone of contention with some of the people there because uh, for the, the sort of the top tier stars, this is something that's optional as opposed to 
compulsory kind That's of sort of. <laughs> yeah, so, so That's a relief. Randall Keith, that email's popping straight into his junk. He's not worried about it. But again, that's causing some issues like, well, why am I going in and, and they're not doing it? You know, where's yeah, I the. Wanna, I want to know who is and who isn't now. Can somebody leak some photos here? <laughs> who's Zoom in who? Find out. And we'll keep you up to date at cultaholic.com. Let's go uh, to. Let's, let's go behind the scenes. Let's go back to the back office at WWE because there's been loads going on uh, from there in terms of a deal between New Japan Pro Wrestling and Dub Dub E. Something that Tony Khan has taken his own personal shots at. And we have an update uh, from Meltzer on that today. He says the idea at first had nothing to do with screwing over AEW. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> Although an exclusive deal obviously would would shut out AEW and Impact Wrestling, I think that they're keen. WWE suddenly keen to open the forbidden door, but it's only like a one way door. It only swings the one way. Uh, the deal talked about would have been more likely to be focused on NXT. Now, there was conversations uh, about 2019, I think, of possibly WWE buying Noah or Stardom or getting in there with Big Japan or Dragon Gate. So this is... And none of those really came to anything, to be honest with you. So it kind of pay, it kind of plays into that idea that WWE would like to continue launching out this global territory system for NXT. So I'm not saying they would turn New Japan into NXT Japan. That would be hilarious. But it's more the idea of forging those relationships over there uh, to, to make something like that more likely. Now, we've also heard as well that one of the first, one of the people involved in the early stages of these talks was Daniel Bryan. And despite the fact that, you know, he's no longer with the company, he was somebody that was in in the mix for it not so much anymore so i guess that's kind of up in the air some people even thought that the that the approaching of new japan from wwe was a way to appease daniel bryan i'd seen that doing the rounds well, he'd be a little very bit open about the fact that he wanted to work like in other promotions and i believe he specifically mentioned getting back out to japan so maybe he was going to be an integral factor in this but yeah apparently recently the talks haven't been mentioning daniel bryan's name so much which will be disappointing for some and perhaps an indication of where daniel bryan is um, with regard to is not likelihood to re-sign is, is where he's going to be going next if they're not talking about him maybe they don't expect it, Brian to be back in WWE anytime soon I think he will be personally but. Oh, I think he probably will be but regardless of his status the talks have continued WWE has regularly tried to talk with them in the past and it hasn't gone anywhere according to Dave the difference here this time is Nick Khan he's never been involved in these talks and Nick Khan has very much proved himself to be the McMahon whisperer of the last 12 months he has managed to turn Vince's Vince's mind around on so many things that Vince was absolutely solid on doing. It was Vince that wanted to stockpile wrestlers and keep them in a tower. It was Nick Khan that went, hang on, let's... Let's cut back a little bit here. Vince had wanted nothing to do with any other wrestling promotion. He was like, this is ours. Go away. Get off. And it's Nick Khan that's been sort of pushing a little bit further to go, well, let's chat with New Japan. Let's chat with these guys. Let's make some connections. So it's Nick never Khan happened has before. Been... This is, this, no. There's never really been a position where somebody has got Vince's ear in the way that Nick Khan seems to have Vince's ear. So this is fascinating. And by the way, Tom, that lorry that truck that keeps <laughs> appearing randomly behind you is doing my pissing head in it's a lot it's a busy day for amazon there's a lot of deliveries on a friday there's a lot of deliveries on a friday i i'd hope someone in the comments has counted how many times that lorry went past there might be a now. prize there, you go. <laughs> there might be a prize uh hey talking of lorries uh the nxt lorry getting loaded up we'll finish on this one <laughs> the worst Oh, bore off. That's, ma that's amazing. Burns, that the good. lorry, well the NXT Segway. lorry. Uh, not heading to uh, not heading to Japan on this occasion, but heading a little bit closer to home. Uh, the NXT touring schedule seems to be getting back up and running. And uh, this, this is an interesting little story uh, from The Observer this week, isn't it? It's an odd one. Uh, NXT talent being told that they will start running house shows in Florida starting in July. The idea would be to run in the usual 200 to 400 seat buildings they were running in before. Or they ran the central and northern Florida coconut loop. So these th these aren't money makers. This is about getting them experience in front of live crowd, work into TV, and just ho honing their skills basically. Because they film these uh, quite often, and they'll um, yeah they'll do odd bits for digital, and basically just like getting them ready for for the main roster. Um, and he continues, the belief is that the talent will be asked to get vaccinated as something mandatory because they are going to be running in some rural, heavy, right-wing markets. And the feeling is, with that fan base, that they wouldn't be able to enforce a mask ordinance. So, so 
as a result of that, everybody getting NXT, everybody getting vaccines and such ahead of that then. Yeah, would absolutely. Seem. So the, I imagine that's it, it's already started happening. You see, you see wrestlers tweeting all the time that they're getting jabbed. But um, I would expect the they probably won't be able to work the shows if they're not vaccinated, which if, if that is true and that they, they're going to be playing to crowds who might not be vaccinated, might not be wearing masks, it seems like a sensible thing to do, doesn't it? Mm. I'm glad the Coconut Loop's coming back, though, because I don't think we need as many live shows, how like how shows at the back end of nowhere like we used to have. I don't think you need to run the roster ragged like we used to well, in the, the 80s thing. and the 90s, but these are really useful. Oh, of course, yeah, for, mm. for, for honing skills and getting them ready, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I agree. The business model has changed so much in that the majority of the money now comes from like the Peacock deal, the TV deals, that sort of stuff. The, these house shows are seemingly a little bit less important, which is good in the long term for the wrestlers as well, because it's, it's, it's so... It's happened so frequently that wrestlers either get injured or they just get a little bit knackered by working the crazy number of dates that WWE have made them do in the past. So as much as I'd like to go and see um, a house show at the MEN Arena, I can do without it if it means that they're going to be able to wrestle for a little bit longer. Let's just keep it to TV. I'll travel. Easier yeah, done. We, we'll, we'll cope without a half-hearted main event between Baron Corbin and Rick Booze in Newcastle or something. We'll do without that. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, maybe use the time off to do like me, come to Bishop Auckland and have a little cheeky pint. Where is that waiter with my Amazon delivery? It's I'm definitely Poland, isn't it? <laughs> it's definitely Bishop it's Auckland. Right. Good stop stuff. Look, stop looking. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> have a great weekend. Love you. Bye.